When was the last time you remember being caught by surprise? Unaware, ill-prepared. For me, it was about two weeks ago. It was a dark, cool Tuesday evening. I had just left the church to head home and I was driving along Carmel Valley Road when suddenly I saw the reflection in my headlight of a deer's eye as it was running across the road in front of me. And as I slowed down, it made it across. And I let out a sigh of relief. And then suddenly, just as I began to accelerate again, out of the darkness appeared another deer. And boom, I hit it. And as I shared my experience with others and sat trying to figure it all out, I learned that mine was not an uncommon experience. <laughs> and since then, I've been thinking about the events of that night. I've been thinking about the darkness that pervaded the evening and the way that the deer appeared unexpectedly and how totally unprepared I was. Somehow, even seeing the deer in Carmel Valley all over the place and hearing stories of others who have hit deer, I never anticipated that it would happen to me. Maybe I was naive. Perhaps I should have anticipated it. Maybe I should have been ready. Jesus tells us that he will come again and that he will come like a thief in the dark night who catches the owner unaware, unprepared, by surprise. And suddenly my reality made sense because the darkness of the night was so profoundly dark that I could not see clearly. But more than that, I wasn't prepared to be looking for deer. And I wondered, is this what it feels like when God breaks into our lives unexpectedly and we're not ready? Like a deer that runs out in front of us and we have a collision? It's difficult to know if the words that we hear from Isaiah today about God's holy mountain and God's mission to gather all nations together in peace are historically accurate. It's impossible for us to know if the story about Noah and all the people that were busy living their lives and left behind perishing in the flood is true. And equally, it's impossible for us to know and to say with certainty that Christ is coming again. We look to the past for insight and for wisdom and answers, and we look to our future with anticipation and hope. But the place that we find ourselves living in our everyday lives is in the in-between. It's this place that we call a liminal space. Now, the first week of Advent in this season always calls us into the discomfort of the in-between space. Always it is a time of tenderly holding loosely what has already been and then garnering from it what we can take to benefit our lives and then cradling with thoughtful attention our anticipation of what is to come. Maybe you came to church today expecting to hear about joy or hope or the anticipation of the Christ child's arrival. It is Advent. But instead, you've been met with the prophet's call. Isaiah tells us how God's mountain will rise up and how God's people from all nations will stream up the mountain and how God will pour down blessing upon God's people. There's a lot of movement going on in Isaiah, movement of people toward God and the calling of people to God. It's a powerful image, this mountain, and we're invited to hold on to it and to cling to it, for it is God who will bless and God who will call his people to be a blessing to the nations. It's God also who will judge and arbitrate and save God's people because this 
the prophet tells us, is God's mission, God's hope that all nations, all people, Jew or Gentile, all races, all difference that we carry will come together as one with the Lord on the Lord's mountain and that we will be bearers of peace. We will be the people who transform weapons of death into tools for life. This is God's promise, God's hope and vision. And this is what it is, the prophet says, to walk in the light of the Lord. And it's coming soon. It is a beautiful vision of what could be possible. While the prophet's words may quell some of our anxieties about the violence that we witness in our lives today, about the human-on-human -human violence that we see around us. The prophet's words also give us hope, because peace one day will come. And with that invitation, we are invited to come and to walk in the light of the Lord. We are included. We are comforted. So does it sound too good to be true? Perhaps. Although we may want to cling to God's mission, and we might want to believe in the possibility of what it speaks, we have to acknowledge that the world has been waiting for a very, very long time. And unity and peace often still seem far away unattainable and extremely distant. We may call ourselves to ask, will peace ever be actualized? Isaiah tells us that it's coming, and the psalmist follows right behind with echoes of the same. And even St. Paul was certain that Christ was going to return in his generation's lifetime. There was no doubt, and yet here we are. We are still waiting. We are still anticipating. We are still living in the in-between of what has been and the promises made and the hope of the future and the promises made. So what then are we to do in this Advent season? How are we to hold both the past and the history and the future and the hope? as we live in the only time that we actually have here on earth, which is the present, right now. Jesus is clear. Paul echoes the same sentiment. Keep awake. Be ready. But how? Notice he doesn't tell us exactly how. Perhaps the invitation before us today is the invitation to settle into this present moment, to not allow ourselves to succumb to the pull of the holiday fervor and its urgency, not to allow ourselves to look back and mourn and feel sad because of what hasn't been, but to find ourselves present and anchored in and with God in this moment today and in this moment again and again. It is the prophet Micah who calls us, to love mercy, to do justice, and to walk humbly with God. And Jesus models Michael's, Micah's call. Jesus is the living example of Micah's call. So what if our Advent mission was to look around us and to extend ourselves to one another with consideration and kindness? to not nitpick, to not get at each other, but to show kindness and mercy? What if we were to take just one, one tangible step toward restoring justice for someone for whom justice is just a dream? What if through our worship and in our prayer and in fellowship with one another, we could deepen our relationship with God and with one another. What if this is what it means to be ready right now? 
My friends, we've been called to walk in the light of the Lord. And none of us wishes to remain in the darkness. None of us wishes to be left behind. We also don't wish to be caught unaware. We don't want to be surprised. We don't want to be caught not ready. So with an eye on the past and an eye on the future, Jesus is calling us to live fully as followers in this present moment, as bearers of God's love and God's justice and God's hope. It is Advent. Surely we are looking for Jesus, the Jesus who is to come, the Jesus who has already come, and we are seeking the Jesus who will come again. So like a deer that jumps into the road in the night, God is breaking in and breaking through into our lives at unexpected moments all the time. All the time. We don't always know how or when or where, but if we pay close attention, we may notice God's inbreaking. And we can anticipate. We can come to God in prayer, offering up our requests and our hopes for our loved ones and our family and our community. We can come to God seeking insight and wisdom as we actively practice our faith in this present moment. Advent may feel like it is a time of waiting, but truly it is much more about a time of preparation, about readying our minds and our bodies and our hearts and the whole of our being with God. It is a season that affirms the sacred truth of the state of our living. And that sacred truth is that we live in the liminal time, in the liminal space. That sacred truth is that we live between the already and the not yet. And as much as we're frustrated because we can't know everything there is to know, and we can't see everything there is to see, we can encounter the risen Christ in one another and in the world around us. And it's there that we find that it is Christ who shines light into our darkness, who gives us hope for our future. It is Christ who breaks in again and again so that one day when the time comes, and it will, we will be ready. I pray that this Advent season, may God illuminate our path and help us to see clearly all that is around us every day. May God's love and light break in and break in boldly, catching us by surprise and perhaps causing us to laugh. O come, O come, Emmanuel, is our prayer. Come to us is our hope, abide in us, is our deepest desire. Be with us now, O Emmanuel, and in the world to come.